Hello, my name is Yashar Miner. I'm part of Group 7, and here I'll be talking about congestion control. This is the area around Chapter 6.5. So to understand congestion control, we need to discuss what happens in the transmission control protocol. So when the load off to a network is more than what that network is able to handle, that is when congestion takes place and builds up. So the network layer detects congestion when queues go large, mostly at routers, and then the network will attempt to manage it. So this is where TCP comes in. So transmission control protocol, also known as TCP, plays that big main role in controlling congestion, as well as another main role in reliable transport throughout the network. So this makes TCP a more distinguishable protocol as it has these big jobs and that separates it apart from the other protocols that we know about so far. So now we'll talk about congestion control and AIMD control law. So TCP congestion control implements and maintains AIMD, also known as additive increase multiplicative decrease control law. So TCP maintains a congestion window whose size is the number of bytes the sender may have in the network at any time. And this goes along with a corresponding rate of the congestion window size divided by the round trip time of the connection. And all of this is adjusted according to AIMD law. So that specific law that needs to be followed by the network controls that congestion window size. So now let's discuss more about the congestion window. The congestion window is maintained in addition to the full control window. And the full control window specifies the number of bytes which the receiver can buffer. Both windows are tracked in parallel. The number of bytes sent is the smallest of the two windows and TCP will cease sending data if either the, the congestion or flow control window is temporarily full. Okay, so now we can talk a bit about Van Jacobson. Van Jacobson contributed to adding modern congestion control to TCP. That is what he's most known for. Now, part of his fix to congestion control was targeted at preventing congestion collapse. And we can kind of quickly summarize and define congestion collapse as a prolonged period in which a good put dropped precipitously due to a large amount of congestion in the network. So Jacobson kind of targeted this and, and he had kind of a high level fix to it. And Jacobson's high level fix was to approximate an AIM decongestion window. And that was kind of his approach to fixing congestion collapse. And he added this to an existing implementation without changing any of the message formats. And because he did it this way, this made Jacobson's fix instantly deployable. So now after we know what Jacobson's fix was, we can kind of dive in and talk about how he implemented it. So Jacobson's fix was kind of just to send small bursts between packets. So the way packets are sent into a network must be matched to the network path even if the packets are sent over a short period of time. Otherwise, the traffic between the networks will cause congestion. And it's possible to use small bursts of packets when sending packets between a slow and fast network. The packets are acknowledged at the receiver. The times for the acknowledgements reflect the time the packets arrived at the receiver after crossing the slow link. 